Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Polio Jr. And to the other side of me, as always, CJ's Info. Chris, what's going on, man? Yo, what's going on, guys? How you doing? I hope everyone's doing well out there. Uh, we're on number nine, I believe. Number nine. Yep. Yep. Running out of fingers. Um, so. Two more. Yeah, two <laughs> more until until we uh, until you have to take off. So you're taking off your socks on number yes, yes. number eleven. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, before we actually, you know, get started on a couple topics that, uh, that Chris and I wanted to discuss, um, real quick here, I have, so, uh, Chris, you can see my screen, right? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So, uh, Chris actually used, uh, which I definitely would recommend, uh, the service called Can Canva. Canva, yeah where you can design your own YouTube channel art and so forth. It's actually, it makes it extra, it's a lot easier now than it used to be. So I highly recommend it for anybody who's starting out a new, new channel or wants to update their channel art. So, but, so we have our new channel art here and then, uh, you know, our banner and then basically what would be considered our, you know, our avatar, or our actual, uh, whatchamacallit logo look our actually yeah like our like our profile picture i guess yeah. you would say so we have those uh so that that's up and running and i know that chris wanted to share something that um that i recently <laughs> that i recently purchased and now chris and i are matching so we're uh <laughs> we're the blue balls brothers <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, blue snowballs, black balls, whatever. Um, I decided to follow my cousin as usual. And da -da -da -da, ba -da -da. there you go. <laughs> uh, so I hope you guys can hear me now. Crystal clear. You can hear my beautiful voice in this beautiful microphone. It's so, so sexy. So sexy. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a, no, it's a really good microphone. I actually noticed the difference. Um, I mean, you can even, uh, we can, I could do it real quick to show you guys the difference. So I'm going to take it off of um, the blue snowball and put it on the 1080p pro stream. Yeah, so here, go ahead, go ahead. Here's my voice right now. Um, it probably sounds like there's an echo. There's more of a, you know, higher pitch noise, I guess. And same for you, Paul, you're gonna switch yours. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing right now. So like- Yeah, I actually hear you like a little echo effect. Um, and now we will put it on um, the yeah. blue snowball. Okay, so this that, this is us at our worst <laughs> using the webcam audio. And now I'm back onto blue snowball. How do I sound? Okay, so same thing here. I'm back on the blue yeah. snowball. Your so. voice became so much more clear. Like, there's no echo. It's clear as day. I mean, just it's beautiful. It's it's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. So it's beautiful. we we definitely recommend these. I, ne I never realized how beautiful your voice was until now. So, <laughs> well, I'm kind of kind of offended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> how dare you? Yeah, I'm with this podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. no, I really recommend everyone. After Paul tell me about it, um, I was hesitant about it because of the cost. It's not that expensive. It's like about sixty bucks. But I got it on Amazon Prime. I signed up. Um, I have a student account, but then I have also another account that's a non-student account. And they said uh, if you sign up, you'll get free shipping, and that cut cut the cost greatly by like I think I don't know ten bucks, and then. Not only that, they said you'll get it in two days, and I literally got it in like a day and a half. So yeah, I, I was supposed to get it tonight at nine, and I got it at uh, about two thirty. Okay, yeah, I got. I mean, I I got it on sale for forty five. Like I put the link in. I put the link in the, in the description again, but it's only on Amazon. The, the exact one that I have that we both have is typically forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Nice. Uh, but, <laughs> but so before we get into the topics, um, I just uh, wanted to talk about <laughs> what I had to do in order to keep my old channel. So to make a to make a long story short, I've had my you know my Polio Junior channel uh, 
for a, a couple of years now, and I received a YouTube guideline strike. And with that, when that happened, it gave me two strikes. And this was not a recent video. This was a video from at least a year ago that either somebody reported or there was just, you know, either a bot detected it, whatever it was. But anyway, I got, I, I received an email saying that this video uh, violates our guidelines and all. It was, it was a really simple video and it wasn't anything horrendous, but uh, so after getting two copyright violations, if you get a third one, <clears throat> like if you have three all together collected, your it's channel, your channel gets deleted. Days. You have, uh, it typically takes yeah, 90 days for each strike to go away. Right. Roughly, roughly 90 days for each strike. At the same away. token, if you get three within 90 days. Oh yeah, you're out. You're out. Yeah. Right. If you get three... If they're all still existing, but they, right. if you get three while well, they're all there, um, you get two and then you get another one, you, you're done. So, so you don't know specifically <laughs> which or like what their YouTube is actually referring to as far as the strikes? No, I mean, so they don't specifically tell you, which is interesting. And now this is not a YouTube bashing session. I'm just stating the facts. Right. Fact is, they did not tell me why the video was, uh, you know, taken off and removed, and that I received a strike. But I was a, but I knew what it was. Okay. It was just it was something in the title that would seem it wasn't inappropriate, but it was just letting people know how they could do something in particular to help them. And I, I'm just not even going to say it on here, even though it's not that big of a deal, yeah. but I'm just not even going to say it because it's, it was so it basically, it was really ridiculous as far as I tried to appeal it. It didn't matter. So I had to go through, and this is what I wanted to get to. I had 402 videos up. Wow. And <laughs> so <laughs> I went through every single one of my videos yesterday and I, and I deleted 36 videos yesterday. Jeez. And in doing that, you lose all those views. So if you have a, if you have a, if you have a, a, a video with 100,000 views and you delete that, it removes it from your total view count. So essentially you're losing money. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm losing stats. And yes, I mean, I am losing, I'm definitely losing money. I don't know how much. Yeah. I don't think it's significant, but you're you're um, basically going it down help. because you did that. I mean, yeah, they all they all uh, thirty six videos worth would definitely help, right? So, I mean, all my top videos are still there; they're fine. But I just wanted to go through every single video and make sure that there was n absolutely nothing there that they could get me on for a, uh, for violating any YouTube guidelines whatsoever. So, yeah. It just but, doesn't make sense to me that YouTube would not specifically inform uh, you as a creator that, you know, you did um, this title is not appropriate or this video, whatever the case may be, they should be a little more specific to help us as creators to not make the same mistakes. I mean, who, nobody wants to get multiple strikes. So, you know, you made a mistake. Okay. We're human. We're human beings. We made a mistake. We're going to fix it. We're not going to do it again. Um, but let us know what exactly you're talking about. Don't be so uh, vague in a way. Yeah, I think the big the thing was that it was over a year ago too, or it was about a year ago. So I wish that there was a better process as far as when they say, "Hey, this video we is not suitable for our platform," and that's their right. Yeah, it's their company. They can do whatever they want with the company. So it's either like it or leave it. Yeah, and, and I also take it back to the fact that YouTube needs us, you and I, and other creators out there if they want us to stay around, you know, um, help us out too. You know, don't just put us on the back burner. Yeah, I mean, I'm 50-50 I, I'm, I'm with that. I, I do agree to a certain extent, but there's always going to be there's always going to be people that are continuously joining. There, there, is, there isn't anywhere else to go. 
Right. Like right. this is this is the biggest platform to be on. Like people, sure. there's more people watching YouTube than there are watching television anymore. Yeah. So. Um, right about that. Yeah. So there's really nowhere else to go. They just want to make sure everything is like, you know, uh, is sponsor friendly first off. I, I think that's the biggest thing. And from what, and in doing so, it's really like kind of cutting down, even, even though it's their platform, it is kind of cutting down freedom of speech in a, in, in a way. Yeah. It is definitely cutting people's freedom of speech. So it's, it's, if you want to watch someone's video, you know, go ahead. And if you don't, you don't have to, you know, right. Just don't, it's like watching a movie. I don't want to watch this movie. I'll change it. Exactly. Well, you have, it's kind of like games and, and movies. You have ratings. So maybe yeah. they, they need to get into more of a rating. I'm not saying that we talk about R rated stuff. Yeah. But it's like, you know, this is, I would say we're pretty friendly with what we say and do here on our channels um, overall. Yeah, so, definitely. I yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, maybe they just need to kind of narrow down um, the ratings of people's videos. Is this a really extreme, um, you know, is this an adult video or is this for kids? Is it teenagers? You know, yeah. everyone, I, so forth. I just wish, I think, like I said before, I think the the appeal process should be better. So I don't think they should just like give you a strike and say, guess what? You get one more and you're going to lose your account. Yeah, and that's, that's if, a... You know, that's a shame <laughs> you know, they would do that because, you know, how many years now, Paul, you've been doing it? Yeah. I mean, I've been doing it since 2012, but I mean, uh, act actively, active, really active, really actively since 2015, the, like January 2015. So what, five years of around about, you've been actually, you know, uh, putting a lot of effort and time and, you know, to, for it all to go to waste would be oh, such, yeah. such, and just, such a yeah. shame. And just like that, you know, right. just, the, just the, the snap of your fingers, all of your videos are going, all your stats are going, nothing exists. And, and then you as a person, are you allowed to remake a new channel? Or? Yes, yes. I mean, that's what I had to do here. Okay. That's so it's not like you're saying you, you're not allowed to come back to YouTube ever again. <laughs> no, it's like this page is not allowed. Okay, this page. You know, under this email is not allowed. But you can go and start a new channel, but you're just starting from scratch. And that's right. what I did have to do in at the end of 2016. I had to do that. I had to wow. I had to re-upload like 100 some videos. But if I had to do that again and upload, you know, yeah. almost 400 videos, that's not happening. That's another thing too, is that I don't have any of my videos. All my videos are on YouTube. I don't have any of them saved whatsoever because I don't, honestly, I don't have the storage for it all. I mean, now I have my yeah. new laptop, but I don't save any of my videos. They're all on my channel. So if they one day decide to get rid of my account, then see you later. Yeah. You know, right, exactly. Facebook, but it's, you know, it's just a puff of smoke and you'll always get, you always get like a vague, you always get a very vague answer on why the channel, on why, you know, something got disabled. Oh, and I didn't tell you this. They also, so because it's a second strike, um, now that I have two, so I can't upload for two weeks. I cannot, oh, wow. yeah, I can't live stream for, um, the same thing. It's all two weeks. I can't upload. I can't, I can't do any live streams for two weeks. Jeez. Most of the stuff is disabled. Luckily the monetization is still there so I can still make money but I can't add any new content for it's like putting for you in weeks. prison. Basically. Yeah. For two weeks, you know, <laughs> in, in a YouTube wow. prison, luckily in solitary confinement. Yeah. So if that, so there shouldn't be anything else on that channel. And I, I don't want to linger on this topic, you know, but just be careful yeah. when you are putting videos on YouTube. Um, unfortunately it's not as easy going as it used to be. Everything is very scrutinized and people it's, now it's not just people at YouTube. Now it is, there are people, individuals like you and I, yeah, that can report a video, you know, yeah. about, you know, wh whatever video they want, they can report it and it can get taken down like that. So well, that, that to me is, you know, they say like snitching, I mean, tattletale on, but I think, yeah, it's important for someone to uh, let somebody else know if a video is really inappropriate, but um, this whole thing about someone spying on other people's videos to say, 
oh, this guy, he's bad. He's a bad guy. Like, no, like what for what? No, there's there's uh, there are trolls. extreme. Why yeah. do you need to report somebody's videos? That it's uh, I know my cousin all my life, and I know Paul has good intentions, so I would never see or even fathom or think that my cousin would ever put out videos that would be uh, inappropriate for the general public. So I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I was, I mean, no, I appreciate that. And that's, that was never my, it obviously never my intention. So yeah. my, my intention is to make, is to do my best to make, to make simple, uh, to make simple videos that make sense and are beneficial to people. Right. So that's and and I enjoy doing them, and for yeah, me having fun doing them. And so also throw a little entertainment in there. Yeah, know? and that's it. So. so and that's all, and that's basically what the video was. It was an instructional video. So unfortunately, it had the wrong keyword in the title. So, <laughs> but um, leaving leaving that aside, it is what it is. It's done. Right. My thirty six <laughs> videos have been deleted to make sure that it does not happen again. Yeah. Uh, walking on eggshells till October 13th. <laughs> so um, the one thing that I know we wanted to get into because you have some information and I have some information on it as well uh, is the upcoming 5G network in the United States. Definitely. So even though it has been more, way more prevalent in the United Kingdom, I know we, we briefly touched on this, but it's actually happening right now. So oh, yeah. I don't know if you want to, you ha I know you have uh, a specific page yeah. on like the speeds and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the cities that they're in right now. So it's not everywhere, obviously. Yeah. I think it's amazing how we were literally just talking about this in a couple of videos ago, I think, or less a uh, couple. And uh, now yeah. all of a sudden I, I look online and it's here. Like it's already here in the U S we were talking about it being in the UK and now here I shared the screen. Uh, on Engadget.com, 5G friendly OnePlus. Uh, all right, let's go to this page first. Sprint's 5G network goes live in New York City, LA, DC, and Phoenix. Uh, 11 million people can use its super high speed network. Um, so here it's saying that how many cities in total? I'm trying to look. Bringing at uh, bringing the total to nine. nine. Right, so. nine cities in the United States after we were just talking about this in two videos have already already have access under sprints 5g network um but at the same time we talked about this you do need to get a 5g network phone so your 4g's will not pick up the 5g uh network no yeah exactly what you just said so yeah you definitely need a new phone and if you don't, if your area doesn't have it yet, at least your phone, the new, the new phone that you do purchase will be ready when it does come to your area. Uh, so. They found in uh, world peak speeds of 600 megabits per second. Which is, day. yeah. And that is <laughs> in a lot of places, in a lot of places, not everywhere, but that's at least 10 times faster for people's home internet service. And I said, no, I'm saying not everywhere because- right there are plans for, you know, 100 to 150 to 300 megabits per second. But to have that, that's a very strong signal. Oh yeah. To, to, I mean, it says average is about 400, but the highest so far has been 600, which is incredible. So yeah. now as far as the phones go, if you want to get on this, you know, bandwagon or this new 5g network, you will need a new phone. And they have a 5G friendly OnePlus 7 Pro available at Sprint, and it's $840. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, I have bought this iPhone X for 1000 and this is only on the 4G. Yeah. Uh, so for that to be 840 for a 5G network is pretty, pretty decent. And I think Sprint's really trying to get a lot of people back onto their uh, you know, Paul and I actually have Boost Mobile, which falls under Sprint, right? Paul? It's, on, it's on the Sprint network. It's under Sprint. So, yeah. um, but they're really, I think, pushing to get people to come back to them uh, if, since they've, if they've left before, you know. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if people started going to Sprint just because 
they're one of the biggest leaders in the 5G technology in the U.S. Yeah. So now here's great. a site just sh- talking about which phones, the actual names and the cost. Samsung, thirteen hundred dollars. LG, almost twelve hundred. Um, That's a nice phone though. Those thin Q phones. Yeah. Dude, they are so they are so nice. Um, again, this is only available in select cities. So, but over, I'm sure within a few months, I can't even imagine by the end of the year, this 5G network will probably be in every city, if not by the beginning of the next year, you know? Yeah. That's what, and that, what I typically do is I wait a year later after a phone has come out. Yeah. So like any of these, cause, uh, I, I only buy LGs. So like here, I, this is the LG stylo uh four okay and then this was the the lg stylo three. Oh wow and, That's a but they're difference. the lgs are fantastic and what's cool when you buy them is they actually give you um 100 gigs of storage on google drive for two years wow so is this uh this that you're talking about thank you lg v50 thank you is this yeah, the beautiful. next lineup from your phone so well, I mean, LG makes a lot of product. They make a they make a ton of phones, right? So, but uh, that's like their that's like their big seller. You know, that's that's like their best phone. So, right, the the stylos, you know, the ones that come with the stylus pen and whatnot are typically, you know, an average. They're not a ridiculous price. Yeah. So, like, I wait uh, a year and I buy. I haven't. I haven't purchased a phone for more than eighty dollars in the last couple of like five years. Well, yeah, I don't really purchase new phones and I mean I don't as long as the 4G network is still decently fast, which it is, I'm not looking to purchase a 5G um until you know, I'm still paying for my phone and it's like all of a sudden they're coming out with 5G. I just feel like that technology is so advanced, advancing so fast that it's almost like you can't keep up, you know. Yeah. Uh, but to continue on this, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to share my screen here <laughs> because I remember uh, your brother actually mentioned that birds are being killed because of how strong <laughs> their frequency is on the, um, on the, on, for the 5G. So here is, and all the links again will be in the, in the description. So let me go here. Uh, okay. And okay. So bird wow. killing cancer causing 5G is the internet's new favorite. Uh, uh, so this is a conspiracy theory. Oh, conspiracy theory. Hold on. But there was one. Because I don't like, how can a bird die from uh, a 5G? So there, yeah, so this one is supposedly a conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't. To mobile. Yeah, yeah. So there's 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 no proof of that. But then somebody, uh, Brussels, and was my still, brother's actually here, Danny. It's a conspiracy theory. So now the this is the main title: is the regional government is concerned that 5G technology can't measure the radiation levels from 5G antennas. Right. So. The, the, to make this short and sweet, we really don't know what it's doing. Right. Every, everything does like radio waves, microwaves, sure. they're all emitting something. Sure. Yeah. Most of it, you know, there's some, there's always some kind of EMF, uh, you know, electromagnetic field yeah. around us when we have electronics turned on. Right. And it is possible that if something is at, you know, a higher, you know, at a higher level that it's possible that it can cause, um, you know, some sort of uninvited presence as far as, you know, towards your health and so forth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, they say the biggest radiation is actually from the sun, you know? Ah, uh, well, sun. yeah, of they course. Say, I mean, uh, going on an airplane, I mean, x-ray. So all these things as far as uh, 5G and phones, I mean, we are putting more and more radiation in our lives with the technology that we have, but at the same time, I feel like there's nothing greater than the sun. I mean, the sun is just yeah, incredible. I mean, it does nothing beats the sun's radiation. I don't think. It, it is the most beneficial. 
it's one of the most beneficial things that we can have in our life. Yeah. And can also cause so much dav so much damage. It's almost like it's almost like the human mind. Like if the human mind is at its is you know, at its best and it's clear and it's calm, like you can do almost anything. But if it's you know, too much if if you're thinking too much and there's too many thought processes then you're going to start having real problems <laughs> like very quickly. So, but obviously without the sun, uh, none of us would be here at all. <laughs> I mean, say, you know, that even the sun hitting your skin, like especially in the back of your, your neck, a uh, certain area there that, uh, or the front of your head um, that it awakens you when it hits your eyes, that it triggers something in your mind to make you awake and alert and it actually makes you feel happier oh it's i mean the well the the vitamin d that comes from the sun is obviously the best natural source to get vitamin d and if you're not you know as long as you're not out there and you're getting burnt every right. every time you go outside yeah a little it's bit one of, of it's one of the, it's one of the health healthiest things you can do uh for yourself in general it's 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 actually really good for your eyes too yeah. So, Although it does bother whatever. my eyes. I mean, I, I wear, um, Oakley sunglasses, uh, cause yeah. I guy surgery, but, um, so I have an eye sensitivity to sunlight, but I do enjoy some sunlight being in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I take it in doses. I'm more of a vampire, but I appreciate what the sun is doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so enough about the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, no, just let's yeah, we we can get off the conspiracy sun, theories sun, and the cancer cause. <laughs> <laughs> and I I always enjoy when we when we're talking about uh like video games and technology, yeah, all that kind of stuff. That those are those are the topics that I really enjoy talking about. Even if I'm not going to use it, it's yeah. still extremely interesting to me. And the sun. And the sun, yeah, <laughs> as the sun. So, I want to see. Uh, now, there's tons of stuff coming out soon. So, I know you have you have uh, some information on. Was it so? There's a new Nintendo Switch. Yeah, PlayStation Five. There's a yep. new Xbox coming in, coming out. Yeah, dude, it's coming. Everything is just like coming out like crazy at the same time with all this streaming and gaming and this and that. Like it's it's nuts. Like you can't keep up. Bring it, bring it up, bring all it right. up. <laughs> all right, so uh, I got it up. I got. It. Let's pull it up. Screen share. Here we go. Let's see it. Hey, okay, Gizmodo.com. Uh, oh yeah, look on the left here. Ray is doing her. Her uh, saber, her lightsaber. I've action. seen her lightsaber move, yep. Double sabers. Anyway, so Gizmodo um, said that Switch Lite is sneaky good. So basically, it's like the old school days where you had a Game Boy, except um, now you don't have a cartridge. You just have – it's a, it's like the Nintendo Switch. It's just that you cannot uh, separate the controllers like the Nintendo Switch. And basically, they're calling it Nintendo Switch Lite. And you will not be able to switch it between the TV, but it's a hundred dollars less. And it just gives you that kind of Game Boy feel um, like you're being a kid again. So you have to, inst you have to install the games on. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, actual I could be device. wrong, but I don't believe there's any more cartridges. Like I had a PSP before and this is similar to a PSP, but yeah, PSP had like a cartridge and I don't believe there's any cartridge. See, so there's no, you don't. There's, there's, there absolutely, there's no input for it at yeah, all. No input for a cartridge. So, so here's wild. the switch and here's the, the light. Uh, right, the right. The light. Um, it looks pretty cool. It reminds me of a, a Game Boy, basically, when we used to play like Zelda or we used to play, um, you know, Pokemon. Pokemon, or, yep. Uh, I think my favorite was Zelda. Zelda was. I mean, Pokemon was definitely my favorite, but Zelda was right, was number two. There was right there. Right. It was so, right there. So uh, the display is five point five inches versus uh, Switch, which is six point two. So it's a little less in size, but I see this being more of um, something for like kids, you know, younger kids that um, just want to play like a Game Boy in a way. They just um, can't. So it's a little bit smaller, and they just can't. Uh, cast it to their TV or they can't play it to the television. 
Right. They can't use uh, it. If the Switch Lite could send out a video out for two hundred dollars, you could buy a Switch Lite. Spend sixty to seventy dollars on an extra pair of Joy Con. I don't know what this is about, but um, the Switch's Lite's only real deficiency would be the lack of an IR camera, which is required for some mini games. Um, okay, an infrared camera. Yeah. Oh wow, okay. that's a really good movie right there. Uh, Will Smith with I Am Legend. <laughs> that's a yeah. That's, that's old now. It's like 2007. Movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, oh yeah okay so here on the uh, main Nintendo.com website here is the cost. It's two hundred well one ninety nine about two hundred dollars coming out September twentieth. Uh, the light is coming out. Okay, not even a month. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing again with this technology. Uh, yeah. So you have multiplayer gaming options, local wireless. Um, so we could like sit next to each other. You see here in the picture, right? Uh, and we can just play together across like that with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whatever it uses. Mm. Probably Bluetooth, online play, um, uh, eShop. So yeah, full games and DLC, digital versions. So there's no more cartridges anymore which to me you know if you remember back in the day it was fun to kind of like have all the cartridges but oh, a yeah. lot of times where you're like <laughs> you're like blown into it, you know, trying to get all of your <laughs> to make this thing work yeah um so technology is really advanced with getting rid of um physical kind of like games in a way you know yeah. digital well all the all the game consoles you can download i mean you can still have the the disc for it but you yeah. can also download them as well you know from whatever it is the xbox store or the playstation store whatever it is yeah you can still you yeah. can download the games and play them directly from the hard drive which is uh, so many games to play two thousand games and counting and they actually have legend of zelda mario kart super smash brothers remember playing super smash brothers on the n64 Oh hell yeah, yeah, Dude, that, and that, yeah. that was so fun, man. That that was definitely at the time that was the best one, and then playing it on the Wii, uh, yeah, when they came out on the Wii, I thought it was actually really good too. We used to like uh, attack each other every time we lost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone, yeah, kill each other, like start fighting each other. Yeah, that's yeah. where you see like controllers getting thrown at each other or across the yeah. room or at the TV, whatever it was. was. Good times. But, yeah, I mean, but every, but just like everything else, I mean, like everything is inside of this console. Everything is, right. everything's. All you have to do is get in the Wi-Fi, and that's it. But now we're, yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just a technology, man. I, I feel like we just can't keep up, and really, it's just to me, it all comes down to money. Every day, it's just it's more money, more money. But um, it's just, you know, it's just more convenient. It's it's convenient. less things. It's less. It's less of they don't have to create as many physical items anymore. Right. As well. So like, okay, make the console. All they have to do is get online and that's it. Yeah. That's it. So just make the console. We don't have to make a million games, you know, it's just by downloads, you know, and that's all. So. It's amazing how no matter what age you look at, everything has always been something to better the convenience like okay so you had this and it was convenient because it did this now you yeah. have this it's going to cost more but it's going to be more convenient because it does this you know yeah i don't know it's funny because i think that there's other other than you know better consoles coming out with better graphics and where you don't have to buy the the physical games and all that the, I don't see, and now maybe it's just for whatever reason I can't see it. But like, what? Where else can you go from there? As far as like phys, as far as like playing a video game, like it has to be stored somewhere. It has to be on a right. hard drive. So there's really nowhere else to go now because all the yeah. physical stuff is gone. Well, we talked so. about this too before, right? So um, I mean, people should know this, but think about this even though physical things are disappearing maybe in our house the physical part of online and let's say uh data what you're talking about has mm -hmm. to be stored somewhere am i not wrong 
No, no, yeah. So there's like, there's so always there going to be is still something out there storing all this information. There's always going to be a, house. There's always going to be a server room somewhere. The the information has to, has be. to be somewhere. But yeah. what I'm saying is, it's going to be, you know, in this you know one like gigantic place. Yeah. Where they have you know a, a ton of hard drives that are rated yeah. together. And so forth. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't know if people realize that on Earth there is somewhere where there has to be something physical to store the data that we're doing online. It's not yeah, like oh, yeah. like uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, like little things. Like that. <laughs> I mean, there is stuff going on in the air that you can't see, but physically, as far as what you save online, Facebook. YouTube videos, anything that you save online physically is somewhere in the earth being stored on some kind of hard drive on a hard drive. Yep. It's just yep. not, it's not possible. And I don't think there ever will be a time where they could invent something that would not have a physical uh, it, data or what hard drive is what I mean. Yeah. It has to, I mean, you should, you should see, the, um, the, the Google like control rooms that they have. Oh yeah. As far as they are, it is insane. Like there's, it's just backups of back. Like there's like the main, you know, it's whatever it is. And then they have like 10 backups. If a, if a hard drive goes, all they do is literally take out that hard drive and then just put in a new one, plug it in and that's it. Crazy. <laughs> so it's nice. I'm, but yeah, there are, there, uh, Google, Microsoft, you know, really big companies that, you know, are relying on people using their services online, downloading games and so forth. Yes, there is, there's a physical place where they're doing that as far as the, it's just the only thing they don't have to worry about as much is just producing the physical games yeah. and, and, uh, and producing them and shipping them out and all that. Cause before it'd be like you buy a console, which you still have to do obviously, right. but you're not shipping out a million. You don't have to make a million or plus games for for one. You don't have to make a million copies of one game. You know, like some like Super Smash Brothers just sold like I forget what it was, but millions of copies. Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. You go to one place. This is where you download it and you bring it to your console. You're done. Right. <laughs> so there's definitely the convenience and the manu manufacturing aspect. So they don't have to worry about as much inventory and where everything is stored is either on your personal console and also what people call the cloud, which is the cloud just means it's stored somewhere else physically. That's yeah. all. That's all it means. <laughs> so yeah, that's really what it is. the cloud's a hard drive somewhere I think else. It's <laughs> online. Again, it is physically being stored onto a hard drive somewhere on this planet. Yeah. Even online and any website is, is hosted from a hard drive, everything, yeah. everything. And that hasn't, that's never changed Yeah. as far as computers go. The next thing that I really want to see, and maybe it's just because I watched sword art online, I personally don't play a lot of video games, but if there was an extremely immersive video game where you go into it and you can barely tell the difference between the game and reality, yeah, I would buy that in a second. Yeah, I think that's that's already <laughs> becoming uh, the next generation where what they call virtual reality, right? VR. Virtual reality. Yep. I think that's they're really pushing for that um, experience for you to put. You have to like put either a, a, a like a face mask on or a headset. Like there is no other way for you to not. You have to wear something for you to experience this virtual reality effect. Yeah, something that be that wouldn't harm your brain, but also able to take over all of your senses as well right. would be really cool. They actually, the military actually uh, are, they've been studying this kind of stuff with wearing um, these suits where it actually is taking control of the senses as far as it knows what it's uh, the, the soldier or Marines uh, oxygen levels are all, all their uh, vital signs. They knows, it can tell them who's up ahead and this and that. So the military really is uh, pushing for that kind of 
technology too. Yeah, I'm sure there's tons of stuff that, uh, like that NASA has. Kind of like Halo in a way, like making a soldier into a super soldier. Or right, right, right. Or like Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> um, like Star Wars, I guess. Star Wars is what I think of. I got gotcha. you. Or like, um, like NASA and I'm sure even companies, private companies like uh, like SpaceX. I'm yeah. sure there are things that they have developed or or are in development in their beta process that are light years ahead of what we have personally seen or used. And that I cannot wait for. That would be oh, yeah. the, the, immer- the, the total immersion. Oh, I'd be all in as long as I can't feel any pain in the game. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as there's uh, no physical pain, but going yeah. from, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about, you were mentioning about the PS4, I mean, PS5 now. Yeah. Uh, and Xbox is just, again, like incredible. I mean, I'll share the screen here. Um, they just keep pushing out for these new consoles. Um, I, I love it. I mean, I love Xbox. And I, I had PlayStation when I was younger, but I kind of turned towards, leaned towards more Xbox for some reason. Same, 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 same. Yeah. Uh, techradar.com. Uh, says PS5 will now be coming out versus Xbox Project Scarlet because I guess they don't have an official name for the new Xbox console. Right. Uh, it's talking about, I guess it will be released, both of them, around the fall of 2020, the holiday as usual, 2020. That's always, it's always during the like the fall season. And holiday season, yeah, that is when you see a lot of stuff being released. I was talking about this with somebody earlier, and that's because, a, you know, it's the it's the winter time. Christmas gifts, yeah. it, it's well, not I mean, yeah, Christmas gifts definitely, but since it's the winter time, um, a lot more people are home than indoors, they are. Yeah, a lot more people are indoors outside. than they are outside. You know, especially exactly. during the summer, unless you're in the southern hemisphere. Right. Right. Yeah. So I think they're thinking it might be called Xbox Two, uh, but we're not 100 percent sure. Mm-hmm. So PS5 and Xbox Two, I guess, would be the names for the new consoles coming out. Um, is this a? What's it? So this, uh, did I see 8K? Did I see 8K? Yeah, you did. I, I did. Okay, the PS. Hold on. on. The you there? Are they, okay. There PS5 you go. will support screen resolutions of 8K. Oh my God! PhD. Uh, well, you know, increasingly 4K is popular, um, and this is again the technology for this stuff is just going nuts. Yeah, and believe it or not, that 120 hertz uh, refresh rate yeah. is is that is amazing. Oh yeah, like, that's just not something a lot of people know about. Super but, smooth movements in the games. Oh my, oh my God. Specs. Yeah. We wouldn't expect a game to hit these standards regularly, not to mention requiring expensive TV to support them, but it's good to see what Sony is aiming at saying here. Solid uh, state drive storage, too. Is oh, what yeah. I saw there, yeah, too. I just saw that. So. Basically, my laptop that I bought um, is cheap, 500 bucks, but it's solid state. Um, yeah, if, you, if nobody, if, if people don't have solid state drives, now like you're definitely starting to get behind yeah but i would still use i would use a traditional a traditional hard drive as my backup hard drive but for running an operating system a solid state drive all day long and um as you know paul i mean we love halo and halo was the biggest game for xbox when it came out um and those all people played they're going to have a Halo Infinite now uh, game coming out for the new Xbox. So I think that's going to be their biggest kicker there for the selling of the new Xbox 2 or whatever you call it. Halo Infinite. Uh, Master Chief Returns Holiday 2020. Um, let's see here what else we're talking about. So we, still, we, still, have a year, we still have a year and a couple months to go here. Yeah. So, yeah. Halo 5 was a major disappointment, it says. Um, But I think Halo Infinite is going to be – here's a clip. If you don't mind, we'll play it a little bit. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, like I said, let's get more into, like, the actual gameplay. 
Yeah. So yeah. then, uh, pe- then people it talking about it. So and not. Do you hear it? So I cannot hear it. All right. Let me put the volume up then. Oh wait, that's because I have my headphones in, right, Paul? No, you why? should still be able to to share. Uh, you still if be I able put to the share. volume up. Do you hear anything now? I don't personally hear anything. So the Halo um, Infinite here, we're playing the, the trailer. I'm just, we fixed the sound issue here. Uh, and how big are you? I'm baby. There we go. Like Cortana, so uh, more of a virtual <laughs> Cortana <laughs> here. Let's just, that's pretty cool. It almost reminds me of Star Wars. Yeah, but she's like a hologram. I guess, uh, is that Master Chief? I don't know. I have no idea. Who that guy is? It's just some randy bearded guy who was looking at a hologram. So, let's get to the action. Yeah, there's I know. Did he find? I think it looks like he found Master Chief. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's going to put the suit on, I think. So or is that him? Good. Okay. I think Maybe he's going to put the suit on. Yeah, because Master Chief was a mystery for a long time. No, it's not him. No, it's not him. Oh, uh, so he's basically turning him on. Yeah. He's like, he's getting him up and running. Right, right. That's cool. Is there any, any battles? Because uh, most of it right now is just a storyline. It's not that it's a big deal, but... Yeah. but they, they played this at E3, the 2019 E3 convention. Yeah, yeah, this was yeah. dude. I love that song. I just love it. It just gets me like so hype. <laughs> I just love it, dude. It was fun. To, it def- that's the same thing, basically. I yeah, think. I don't know if this is uh, any more of a. See, it looks like there's more of a battle, or let's see. Keep going. Fighting, maybe. I mean, the graphics. The graphics are absolutely. Oh my god, dude! The graphics, and I'm using my laptop for the graphics. Yeah. So- they they're, un- they're unbelievable. Oh You're not, um, we're not even watching it in high definition. Oh, he took his helmet off. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, I can turn it wait. down a little. <laughs> so I don't know the volume went up. No, you're fine. Yeah, you just turn down the... Oh, oh shit. Yeah, they're, just, they're just sneak peeks. Just yeah. close it out. It's not a big deal. So, dude, I cannot wait for this at all, Paul. I mean, I don't know if this is something I have to play on the new console, but if that... If that is the case, I'm buying the new Xbox. New Halo, I yeah. Care. I love Halo so much, dude. I, it's the one game I love. And I love playing <laughs> I love the multiplayer. Halo is just, it's been my favorite game of all time. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, more, I don't mind playing campaigns, but I do prefer to play multiplayer more than anything. Like, I'll play multiplayer before I even touch a campaign. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I've just there. always enjoyed um the campaign where you had missions and stuff i just love uh completing like missions for some reason uh and it's like you. a lot of games nowadays are leaning away from that like everything to me seems like it's always online and multiplayer there's so many games for xbox right now that you can download for free and they're strictly just multiplayer um such as um Trying to think of that. Fortnite. Fortnite, Fortnite exactly. Yeah. So Fortnite's a free game. There's Apex, these games out there that you can download for free for only <laughs> multiplayer. And honestly, I'm not saying – I've never been a big multiplayer fan except when I played with my cousin Paul because I love him to death. Well, we um, play zombies. And <laughs> we play yeah, Paul zombies, yeah. Paul Dewey's been my favorite. There's only certain select multiplayers that I've enjoyed, but I've always enjoyed the campaign of a – you know, like back in the day when Call of Duty had their campaign games, you know, right. they were my favorite. Try to adjust my, adjust everything here. <laughs> There's a computer game that um, our cousin, who's no longer around, um, played um, named Thief. Thief was a really cool game. And I forgot about that. Yeah. A medieval kind of, uh, you know, like you were an assassin in a way, Assassin's Creed um, kind of thing. And it was just so funny, man. It was a very humorous uh, PC game. Yeah. And they came out with like three different Thieves so versions. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen that in a while. It's yeah. Like Thief game. They did make it for the Xbox. It did come out for the Xbox, and I played it on the Xbox. On the original one? Yeah. The original? Yeah, it came out okay. for 360. Huh. So. Interesting. Well, uh, well, while we're on the topic of gaming – <laughs> this actually 
Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen real quick on uh do, do, do. now this is the title speaks for itself. You can see everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh bleh. Steam vulnerability impacts 96 million Windows users. And wow. I I did go through this article and it doesn't it doesn't matter if you have, um, like it seems as though it, it was more geared towards Windows 10. Oh, one and second, Paul, is your, is your snowball on, off? Cause it sounds like- We got a little bit of No, 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 like? something, ha something happened. Okay. As far as- I apologize, I'm trying to figure out this technical difficulties here. here. Not sure why the- Okay, we just had a- a quick interruption there. So we, we want to make sure everything runs smooth here. So can you see the screen that I'm showing you? Yes. Okay. So there, so obviously now when you play an online game, 99% of the time you have to go through steam first before you play the game. It's not like how it was back in that. the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like how it was back in the day where you just buy the game. I never actually, honestly, I never heard of Steam. I don't. I never heard of this. You definitely. I mean, I'm, you definitely. Once you see it, you'll you'll remember. Okay. But there were tons of games that I couldn't play because I had to have Steam, and then, huh. yeah. So, but what happened was that there was these hackers, who, a long story short, they were able to go through people's uh, Steam accounts with people that had Windows and get in through this like this backdoor option and somebody actually has well link is in the description and it's all i'm sharing it right now but there's a video here and this guy here actually showed how to do it like he showed the people who were working at steam and microsoft how easy it was to actually get into somebody else's computer you know uh, in through the back way and just and just use their computer uh, use your computer as they wanted and I believe that they could do it without even knowing so you could be playing a game and doing whatnot and they're in the background looking at everything That's so incredible. but there has been but they I, they did put like all they did do a new patch like there's a new upgrade new updates and stuff like that that are uh that have gotten rid of this vulnerability. And like Chris and I talked about before, this stuff's just, this stuff goes, it's just going to go back and forth all, yeah. the, all the time. As I always all say, the time. Man, something's created by man, it can be broken by man. I mean, nothing is foolproof. I mean, or whatever, hack proof. You know, someone can always hack something somewhere, somehow. Uh, it could be very, very difficult, but it's always a possibility for someone to hack something. Yeah, I mean, that's a, like that, that's actually like a really good, uh, it's actually like an old, an old saying is the gist of what you're talking about is, you know, if somebody can make it, somebody can destroy it back and forth, back and forth, right. essentially. So that, and that's all it's going to happen. <laughs> like they'll fix this bug and then like steam, steam and windows will work together. They fixed it. And then there's going to be another hacker who's going to figure out how to do, how to go, how to bypass that. And it's just going to go back and forth. I mean, personally, I don't know why somebody would want to hack somebody knowing that they themselves could be hacked, you know, as well. Like, it's kind of like, you know, um, why would I do something to someone? The whole golden rule is, you know, do unto others as you want to be done to you. You know, why would I want to do something to somebody else and then have somebody else do that to me, you know? Yeah, and, and we talked about this before. Three others as you want to be treated, you know. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And even though there are, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a, an appropriate word here, but even though there are, there are hackers where they're trying to be malicious, a lot I've seen in previous interviews or just people that have posted who are professional hackers, they're saying, like, they do it just – either to uh to help the comp to show the companies that hey like this is penetrable 
and right. you know you're 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 at risk. And yeah. the other part is just the excitement of it. Is it? It's a actually it gives them a thrill to yeah. like this. This is this is something that. Well, it's a crime. An I mean, you're, you're committing a crime uh, online. It's a cyber crime, um, and it's hard to, um, what do you call it, prosecute someone. But uh, what do you call it? It does. I didn't. I know. I understand. It helps for security patches for people's accounts to be protected. But at the same time, if you're doing it because you're, you know, you're just you're committing a crime online is what you're doing. You know. Yeah, and I I don't think days, the- it's like technology it's more and more easier, I would say, to be uh, tracked or to find out who this person was. I mean, I hear it on the news all the time. Somebody did this, uh, somebody uh, hacked this, and they, they found out who it was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it, it goes right back to what to what we were talking about, where there there are people that take a lot of preventive measures, and some will get caught, some won't. But the guy from the the guy who revealed it, he was for, he worked for. There's a website called Bleeping Computer, and it's okay. a, it's a it's an awesome web. It's such a good website if you want to be like completely in the know as far as what's going on in technology, and especially more specifically with computers. They have tons of cool um, pro like unique programs, but they also have patches and updates to fix certain things so it's pretty cool uh bleeping computer all together and then like even though we don't have it up but just real quick like it just seems like windows 10 is just having a you know in when windows 10 first came out there were tons <coughs> excuse me there were tons of reviews about the secu- about your your privacy issues with windows 10 uh, to Microsoft and basically that's just still <laughs> that's just still happening now and they're dealing with uh, the backlash of that is costing Microsoft what was it like over four billion dollars because that's amazing. yeah yeah because of security threats and all that good stuff uh, and the pr- the privacy issues are a big thing and it wasn't that's just that's not just now that was when in 2015 when windows 10 first came out that was a big 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 issue so but as we keep going along windows 10 is going to be the only one that's available because windows 7 is gone in january or at least it's not going to be supported by microsoft anymore uh windows 8 uh, two years after that it won't be supported so and it seems like Windows 10 is just going to keep updating and updating, and they're not really releasing a new operating system yet. So yeah, again, it sounds like that they're just trying to um, get everybody on the same page and get out of the so-called technology rock. Like you're using Windows, you're using dial-up still, which I think there is still. <laughs> my, dad. my dad's still using dial-up. So. There are there are very it is very rare. But there are, there are people out there that they just don't use the computer like how we would. Yeah. I mean, the people, so. and I get it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, especially um, older people who don't like change. They don't like to move on to something new. They want to stay with what they have. They don't want to spend money periodically uh, all the time for something new because it does this when they're thing that they have does the same thing it's just that it's like oh the joneses we got to keep up with the joneses you know <laughs> yeah they just uh like the, the the older people that get on they're just going i just gotta check my email <laughs> and then that's really it <laughs> that's really it it's like how do you communicate with grandma either I, I call her or i email her and god forbid if she ever learns how to text so Mary, what's my AOL password? Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Do you remember? I forget how to turn on this darn computer. It's Where's that the power button? Yeah, it's that big square, Grandma. Yeah. yeah. On the front of the computer, see that? 
there's a lot of people out there that really still do not like they still don't understand like i don't know maybe amish people like that don't well they <laughs> they they only hear about it like they hear about it in passing like yeah, at like, when they're selling goods and that kind of stuff how many cows do you have today um for sale and they're like uh two they're like did you know on the laptop the windows 10 there's a security uh flaw and they're like they're like what the hell are you <laughs> talking about they're like milking the cow right now like no oh, idea no, no like, clue windows, i have 10 windows in my house <laughs> <laughs> that's where the uh the the mennonites it's it's basically like they're a little bit less strict than the amish yeah but if you saw them up close they they look virtually the same they do everything the same but i believe like like if you're a real amish person it's everything like there's you can't use electricity no you know there's abs- no modern things at all yeah like you can only use what you build Right. I have a uh, lot of respect for them people, honestly. I mean, they uh, like yeah. to stand the test of time with our technology pushing and, and not just technology, but like everything that involves it, agriculture, um, everything surrounding our lives and what we kind of like accepting the modern age and not rejecting it. It's almost like the Amish rejected it in a way, but somewhat accept it and they still live to their standards of almost like a caveman style that, you know, we, like you said, you build it. This is what, this is like our creation, you know, not made by a computer or robot. Yeah. I I think it's actually, I think it's actually more beneficial to on what they're doing because they're more in touch with reality. Right. Than a lot of us are. And so I, I believe that, even though I may not believe in, you know, maybe some of their, like their religious order and that kind of thing. But besides yeah. that, I really, I really believe that they are, they're definitely more in tune with reality than, than we are. So it's like, I think they could stay in a room by themselves or wherever it is and be completely fine for be day, happy, yeah. days on end. Where, they don't need an uh, iPad or, you know, device to keep them happy. Yeah. It's not like we're today where we lay down, you know, a lot of people lay down and like, or either leave the TV on or they're, you know, on their phone, like, <laughs> yeah, who, who just put, I'm going to see this new post <laughs> who shared this. And Oh, what's Jimmy doing? Hey, Jimmy, yeah. such a jerk. I hate Jimmy. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. So, or getting, tr- you know, and getting triggered all the time. Every 10 seconds, you know, when the Amish are like, uh, we already know, uh you know what's going on yeah they're like the sun came up we milked the cows <laughs> we did you know we prepared the farm like you know the farm's good everyone's eating the you know. around. <clears throat> yeah the animals are fine it's just gonna come out at four in the morning yeah the horses are good all right that's it let's see what these spacemen are doing next yeah. to us you know we're like uh, we don't we don't know i don't know i need to know i don't know what i don't know i don't yeah. know it's it's yeah, I mean, it's the the internet is such. There, there's so many beneficial things online, but at the same time, there's so many detrimental things, and is, uh, I think, too excessive. So it's always up to the individual. It's always up to the individual to, you know, to monitor their usage on what they're doing. Like if you're on the computer all day or on your phone yeah. around electronics all day. And I've been guilty. I've definitely been guilty of that. And, you know, it's definitely, it's not I healthy. Think, I think it's really uh, changing, you know, the next generation of children, uh, you know, people like my daughter to this instant gratification and this instant need to know, and even us, but learning, uh, basically taking away patience, you know, you no longer have patience, um, you know, to, uh, hold off, you know, why do you need to know right now? Why do you need this information? This, this very second, this moment, you know, when you're driving or whatever you're doing, uh, even as a kid, I mean, everything is just, it's given to you almost like on the silver platter, they say, but now it's given to you on an iPad. It's given it to you on a device. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember reading something a little bit ago where 
people or more more teenagers were on Facebook or what any kind of social media platform and by getting you know by reading you know positive com like comments that would lift their self esteem they were like releasing it was actually literally releasing dopamine you know make, making them feel good about it but crazy. at the same time you know there's always going to be those people who are going to you know start some crap on you know or there's yeah. a troll or just someone that's mad at more at themselves so they're mad at the world right and so they get triggered over everything <laughs> everything is misconstrued it's twisted their whole perception of the world is that they're this victim and that they have to continuously defend themselves and it's just it's a terrible way to to live and i really i feel awful for these people because they must suck to be them yeah that's, be that's so hard. mad to get so mad I mean, I think to get upset, like in, in a negative way, like you can get upset and cry, you know, like where you, you know, if somebody passes away or if you feel bad for someone, you know, you can cry. But I think like getting upset to where it's destructive to your system, you know, there's, you know, it's time to back off on, yeah. on what is helping uh, cause and promote that. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not a healthy way to live. No. And so this is the only, this is the only life that I know of. Right. Uh, that, that I'm aware of. So at least while I'm here, yeah, I'm going to do my best to enjoy it and stay as calm and as yeah. full as possible to the best of my ability. And, you know, let the, whatever the, whatever the old saying is, you know, let, let the ship, the, let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. You know, Try I always to, try yeah. to stay as happy as I can. I mean, I try not. It takes a lot to really be upset about something. And I find always try to find a way to be happy about something, even even as simple as taking it to uh, gratification that you're grateful for. Uh, just waking up today, I'm happy to be doing this with you, Paul. I'm happy to be able to breathe. Like people forget that you're breathing, that you're living. You yeah. Know? Be grateful that you're able to do what you can do. No, I, I I agree. I mean, that's one of the... I can see, I can hear, I can eat, I can go to the bathroom. Like, I have all these <laughs> abilities. You know, it's amazing, and we take it for granted. Yeah, I've... Um, I am definitely... Yeah, I'm, I'm def... Like, just like you said, the, the simple things. Like, sometimes... Like, there, sometimes I'll lay down... And I'm just laying down and I'll just go like, man, I, I'm just grateful to have a roof over my head, to have money in my account, to be able to, you know, to, to have food on the table, people that, you know, I can call and talk to and, um, you know, to be able to live a, a, pre, a relatively stress-free life. Yeah. The only stress that I have is is always um created in my mind yeah so because you can deal with outside things easily calmly and easily and they're always better uh dealt with that way in my personal experience so anything from the outside that's where you think that's the problem it's always it's always in your Internal. head it's yeah. always in your head like you're like there's there's a part of the story that is that you just can't see. Yeah. So your mind's just showing you, you know, the, the negative things and it's making up stories where it doesn't have all the information. So it's putting together a story that's not even true. It's amazing how manipulative your mind can be over your, you know, your own being. Oh yeah. Be one of the best, the best or worst tools that we, that we have. <laughs> so how do we get on this path? i have no idea. i forget doesn't matter uh, windows 10 and all of a sudden we're getting into uh like um uh what's that guy called the what we were talking about the amish and then we we're saying like no, no. well what's the guy um like the the dalai lama i feel like we're turning into the dalai lama ah, no this is just right i mean this is just yeah just no i love walking. it i just it's funny yeah. how we went from windows 10 to amish to <laughs> to our you know. to how we feel about life so but it's cool but, it's cool 
Uh, yeah. What what, were, um, what other topics do we have left to talk about? I mean, we do have we do have two other topics. So it is it's up to you. Uh, and the, oh, it's I mean because I feel like that that last part was actually a really good ending segment. Yeah. I feel like that ended the podcast really well. So I don't like I <laughs> it feels <laughs> it feel feel weird to, yeah, exactly. to talk about what we just did and then say Netflix just <laughs> out with this new movie <laughs> like I yeah, right. you know so it doesn't really they don't really go together so yeah I think uh, we put it at a peaceful uh, ending. Yeah, so we can we can save other stuff for, you know, uh, for the next episode. And sounds you know, good. And j- just to let everyone know, <coughs> excuse me. At the at the moment, there we do not have like we do not have a set schedule of right. when we're going to release episodes. And you know, and, and Chris and I have have talked, and this isn't something that's going to consume our lives. It's going to be something that when our, uh, when our first, you know, quote unquote duties, duty, no, <laughs> like the, the things that we, you know, personally have to get done in normal the real priority. world. Yeah. Normal priorities, how we're making our income, you know, you know, family matters, whatever it is, um, you know, always have to get done first. And then, you know, this is always fun to do, you know, but there are, you know, obviously other priorities that we have. So like a hobby, you know, on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, don't get us wrong. We want to, we definitely want to make as many as possible and keep, keep getting them out there to, to everybody. So I would say, I would say at the very least, the very least right now would be one a week. I think that's the very least. Right. So, and at the most, you could see up to five or six. <laughs> so, but yeah, we we're puffing them out in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, well, this was two weeks we, now. No. Well, we started. We actually the first one was August fifth, I believe. Oh, it's August twenty eighth now. Yeah, which is still really, like I said, it's still really good because a lot of people, a lot of podcasts only put out one. You know one a week is typically what they do or yeah. or uh one a week or two a month that's how a lot of podcasts operate and the, the biggest the biggest exception to that rule is joe rogan so we're like podcasts on steroids except not joe rogan steroids no <laughs> no 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 he i mean i'm pretty sure he's literally on steroids because <laughs> his head his head is humongous but yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's an intelligent guy who interviews a variety of people. Well, that to me is like, that's a full-time job to me for him. You know, it sounds like. But yeah, he's, but he's, he's as far as his work ethic, right? his work ethic is incredible. So he can do two or three podcasts and then he does and, and then he, He'll, then he'll go to the gym for two hours and then he'll go do stand up every night huh. and then, you know, work out in the morning and go running. And then he does, he's an announcer for the UFC. So wow. and he's yeah, got, a, he's got a family a too. And he has a family. That's so, a lot. Yeah. But he's, a, he's one of those people where he always has to be doing something. Yeah. Has yeah. to like, and at least from what I've seen, you know, from listening, from listening to him a lot is what I've seen. So, um, but yeah, so we can leave, we can leave the other things we were going to talk about for a different, for the next podcast. Yeah. So yeah, it's no not, a, it's not anything crazy. Right. But I think that the, the release dates of all those new systems are incredible. Oh yeah. And it's, it just seems like it really goes hand in hand with everything else that's going on out there with the streaming services, um, the whatever windows and this and that, it's just, everything seems to be like this competition technology competition, you know, uh, I got, this is better than that. You know, everyone's competing for something, the 5G network, you know, just on and on. Yeah. It's, it's funny how this stuff, how all like uh, whatever the system is or the services, they all come out at the same time yeah. to, to compete against each other. 
So right. all these all these streaming services are coming out almost at the exact same time. The game consoles, uh, like the big game consoles, the, the Xbox and the PlayStation Five, you know, are are going to be coming out, even though it's a year from now. <clears throat> but they always come out exactly at the same time, always. So I don't know if there's a benefit if somebody came out sooner than the other one. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of curious. I always uh, I heard of this thing like. Um, I think it was in college that they said, so let's say you, you're making an ice cream shop and you mm. want to put it here and you're like, okay, I'm putting my ice cream shop here in the middle of the street and then someone else. So I, this is CJ's info's ice cream shop. <laughs> 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 then uh, here comes Paulio Jr. And he's like, well, I have an ice cream shop and I, I can do better. So yeah. where are you going to place your ice cream shop, Paul? Mm. Where would you place it? Let's oh, just say, well, I wouldn't place let's it just here. Say mine is here in the middle of the screen, like in the middle of the block. Where would you place your ice cream shop? Where would I? I would personally not have it anywhere near yours. Okay, so <laughs> apparently the answer or the, the most what they would say is is that they would put it right next to the other ice cream shop. <laughs> yeah, so no, that wouldn't be – that's just not how I would personally do it. Yeah, I wouldn't, so, but I don't know why, but look at, like, uh, Geno's and Pat's. Now they're uh, right next to each other. Yeah, they're right – they're literally across the street. Yeah. So it's like this this fight. It's like, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, um, you know, Sony and Microsoft. It's uh, 5G network, 4G network. It's these things that are, like – they put them next to each other and they fight they fight for the money i could see as far as like you have this basically the same companies right next door to each other and you could go you could say uh you know what i like both of them but you know i'm i'm in the mood for like you said like i'm in the mood for genos tonight right. and then the next night it's like you know what now nah, i'm in the mood for pats so maybe there is something to that where everyone – there's two places there, so everyone's just going to keep going to those places and then just keep switching back and forth so both places actually benefit from being right next door to each other. So I yeah. don't know. That's what – because they're, they're obviously like one of the biggest, like, quote, like cheesesteak places yeah, yeah. in the uh, – you know, around Philadelphia. And like you said, they're right – you know – like 10 feet away from each other yeah but yeah so but yeah i would but me i would still have like my own place where you know yeah i would still have i would still have it somewhere else but definitely interesting so, yeah but anyway guys definitely check us out for number 10 can't wait for number 10 that's going to be awesome 10 10 podcasts this is the ninth so we're really looking forward to the 10th one um, I enjoy doing this with Paul and I hope you guys are watching, liking, commenting. Again, we want to hear your feedback. We want to know if there's anything out there that we're not talking about that maybe you want us to talk about. So we're not opposed to hearing your opinion or your feedback on topics, you know. No. Yeah, no, I agree with Chris. And so, you know, we, we definitely um at, at the minimum we're just asking that you subscribe and definitely tell, you know, sh share this channel to, you know, on whatever social media your platform you're using. And, you know, if you do really enjoy it, you know, tell, you know, tell other people to come check us out and all of the other platforms that we're on. And just to reiterate again, you know, it's YouTube, it's Google, Google podcasts, we're on Anchor, we're on Pocket Cast, and we're on Radio Public. And soon we're going to be on iTunes, Spotify, and a couple other ones as well. So we're going to, we are, <laughs> we're available everywhere. So yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, we're the one thing I'm really waiting on is the iTunes, uh, yeah, the, or the Apple, Apple Podcast. So, but all, all, all in, uh, all in due time. So. Definitely. But thank yeah. you everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Yeah. Episode awesome. episode nine is uh now complete. Awesome. So all right guys. We'll see you on uh number ten, double digits. Have a good one. Later. Bye.